Hi, everybody. It's Pastor Rob with today's Bible Break message. And today that we have a warning from the scriptures, don't fall to Haman's hang up. Now, Haman was a man in the Old Testament. Now, you'd have to open up to the book of Esther. If you're going through Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, all the way just before you get to the book of Psalms, there's a few books in there. You have Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, and then Job, then the book of Psalms. So if you open your Bible up halfway in the middle, just go to the left a little bit, and you'll find the little 10-chapter uh, book of Esther. But there's a man in there by the name of Haman. Now, he wasn't a, a bad guy from the get-go, but Haman... Uh, uh, made a series of decisions and choices, and those decisions and those choices led him down a very destructive path. But today I want to just focus on not following Haman's hang-up. Now, if you read through the book of Esther, and it's a great little book, uh, by the way, it'll show you the providence of the hand of God. It shows God moving even when you can't see him. In fact, it's interesting about the book of Esther that the name of God or of prayer or of the Bible is never mentioned or the scriptures mentioned in the book of Esther, yet God's hand of providence and his guiding protection is very evident. Uh, but through this book, you'll find this guy, Haman, and uh, he wasn't a Jew, he wasn't a Persian, he just got caught up in all the world events, and he ended up in the land of Persia, and he ended up getting promoted to a very high position. And Haman had wealth, he had power, he had family, he had friends, he had it all. In fact, he had a private audience with the, the most powerful man in the world. He had his ear, and he was a guy that the, uh, the king of Persia leaned on. But Haman had one hang-up. There was another guy in the, man, uh, the book of Esther by the name of Mordecai. These two had a conflict. Now, Haman was an extremely high-level official. He would have been like the prime minister. He would have been like the vice president of the entire Persian Empire. And, uh, and yet, there was this little guy. He was just a guy, a, a low-level uh, politician. He, he sat in the king's gate. He was a nothing. He was a nobody. But this nothing nobody wouldn't show Haman the respect that he thought he was due. Uh, he thought that uh, Haman uh, really thought that he, he, he was owed a lot more respect and dignity than what this man was showing him. And yet, in, instead of all of his wealth and power and family and friends and everything he had, he makes this amazing statement in Esther chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, Yet all of this availeth me nothing so long as I see Mordecai the Jew sitting in the king's gate. See, that was Haman's hang-up. He allowed one issue, one problem, one person to absolutely destroy and suck out all the joy from an otherwise perfect life. That was Haman's hang-up. And boy, how, how common that is, how absolutely human that is. And when we read that or we, we, we get a hold of that, we need to understand, how many times have I done that? Maybe in my marriage, you know, I look at all the wonderful things, and yet maybe there's one issue that just gets under my skin. I look at my ministry and the church that God has given me and the, the opportunity God, and maybe there's an issue and it just absolutely just, I want to focus on my flesh wants to focus on that. Maybe it's in your job. Maybe it's with your kids. Maybe it's in some area of your life. You know what? That's the warning of the scriptures. Don't follow Haman's hang up. Listen, God has, you need to zoom out. It's a matter of perspective. Haman had it all. He had wealth, power, family, friends, influence. He had everything that his heart could absolutely desire. But there was one little issue. And you know what? That He let that one issue consume him. He let that one issue take all the joy out of everything that God had given him. He let uh, that one problem, that one person, take all the joy, happiness, and fulfillment and contentment out of the life that he should have enjoyed. But he said, you know what? Everything I have, it means nothing to me so long as I have this one problem. My friend, that's Haman's hang-up. So my warning, my, my advice from the scripture is this. Don't follow Haman's hang-up. Don't let that one issue in your marriage, don't let that one issue in your family, don't let that one issue at work uh, or in your neighborhood or in your career or your ministry absolutely eclipse everything that God has done for you and the wonderful, rich, bountiful blessings of God on your life. My friend, don't do it. Don't follow Haman's hang-up. Because if you do, you see the problem with Haman, we, uh, we see Haman's hang-up. As we follow up with this devotion uh, down the road, we're going to see Haman's hatred led to Haman's hanging. And he allowed his, uh, this, this bitterness to absolutely, literally, physically destroy him. My friend, I hope this has been a challenge to you. I know it's been a challenge to my heart. Until we meet again, let's keep looking unto Jesus.